So why did we develop um, GRADE, we have to see is spelled incorrectly, CIRCOL? Um, systematic reviews of qualitative research, also known as qualitative evidence syntheses, which is the preferred word within Cochrane, are becoming increasingly common, as you know, and they're also being used much more now to inform guidelines and policies um, in quite a number of settings. Um, and so users need methods to assess how much confidence to place in findings from these reviews in the same way that we would assess how much confidence to place in findings from reviews of the effectiveness of interventions. Of course, users are likely to make these kinds of judgments anyway when they're looking at findings from qualitative evidence synthesis, so it's helpful to provide them with a systematic and transparent way for doing this. Um, how did we develop Grade Circle? Um, we're a group um, of researchers with backgrounds in qualitative research and systematic reviews, um, and our expertise um, was drawn into the process. And we also had very broad consultation with a wide group of stakeholders, including within the Cochrane Collaboration. In developing Circle, we needed an approach that could be applied to typical types of qualitative study approaches and data. So in other words, um, different kinds of qualitative study designs, ethnographies, um, uh, simple descriptive qualitative studies, as well as different kinds of qualitative data, data emerging from interviews, observations, focus group discussions, and so on. We need an approach that was easy to use and also allowed the judgments made to be reported transparently. And we also thought it was particularly important that the judgments be understood by um, policy users, many of whom would not have a background in qualitative research. And the picture at the bottom is uh, the Grade Circle project group at one of our meetings uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so as you would have seen, we're a, a project group of the Grade Working Group. And we share the same aim as the GRADE tool, which is used to assess certainty of evidence for the effectiveness of interventions. However, CERCL is, of course, grounded in the principles of qualitative research. And you'll see as we go along that um, we share many both principles and structures with GRADE for effectiveness, but um, these things are, of course, expressed in a different way. So we often get asked questions about the issues listed on this slide. So I just wanted to say from the start that CIRCOL is not a tool for assessing how well an individual qualitative study was conducted. We'll, and there are many, many other tools for that, and we'll come back to that later. It's also not a tool for assessing how well a systematic review of qualitative studies was conducted. So this is not an AMSTAR for qualitative evidence syntheses. Um, it's not a tool for assessing quantitative studies of the quality of care. And it's also not a tool that's intended to be used for assessing confidence in narrative or qualitative summaries of the effectiveness of interventions where meta-analysis is poss not possible. So as many of you will know, quite a number of Cochrane and other systematic reviews of the effects of interventions where people are unable to conduct a statistical meta-analysis, they will write a narrative sometimes called qualitative summary of the, of the evidence. This is not a tool intended for that kind of material. So what is it? Um, CIRCLE aims to transparently assess and describe how much confidence to place in findings from qualitative evidence syntheses. And I think a key point um, is that CIRCLE is applied to individual synthesis findings, um, not to a synthesis as a whole. And um, please just hold that thought as we go through the presentation. It does really influence how we apply um, the circle components. Um, so what do we mean by a finding? Um, in the context of a qualitative evidence synthesis, a finding is an analytic output that describes a phenomenon or an aspect of a phenomenon. Now, in a typical qualitative evidence synthesis, these findings may be presented as themes or categories or sometimes theories. And a finding can be quite descriptive in nature. It may say something, for example, about uh, what different stakeholder groups think about communication they receive around childhood vaccination. Or it may be more interpretive in nature. It may present a theory about um, why people do or don't adhere to chronic medication, for example. 
What do we mean by confidence in the evidence in the context of qualitative evidence? We've defined this as an assessment of the extent to which a review finding is a reasonable representation of the phenomenon of interest, the phenomenon of interest being the focus of the review. What we're saying then, in other words, is that the phenomenon of interest is unlikely to be substantially different from the review finding. Um, I'm going to move on now to talk a little bit about how we go about making these assessments. Um, this, the circle assessment is based on four components, which you'll see on the screen now. First is methodological limitations, the second coherence, the third adequacy, and the fourth relevance. Um, you'll see that there's also a fifth block there um, labeled dissemination bias. And this is an area which we recognize now to be important in the context of qualitative research, but for which we don't yet have an approach to assessing um, within CIRCLE. So we're just flagging it there. It's something that may become part of the CIRCLE approach later. It's, and there's a program of research looking at that at the moment. I'm going to say a little bit about um, each of those later. Um, but firstly, what skills do you need to apply CIRCLE? Clearly, you need an understanding of systematic review methodology as applied to qualitative evidence. And we think it's helpful, probably essential, to have an understanding of the principles of qualitative research. 